Welcome back, uh, my friends, to another unsolicited and unindicated football analysis with your friend David Valentin. Orlando City or MLS as a whole just released the 2022 uh, schedule. So let's go and take a look at it. All right, my friends. So there you have it. As previously said, uh, Sunday, February 27th, 1 p.m., it's going to be the opening of Orlando City's uh, season, 2022 season, um, hosting Montreal or Club de Football de Montreal. Uh, this is going to be basically a grudge match based on what happened last season, how it ended with Orlando City eliminating uh, Montreal out of playoff contention in a 2 nil uh, victory for the boys in purple. Uh, so I expect a lot going on there. This game is very friendly for our folks and uh, outside of the United States, particularly in Europe. So I'm very excited for them. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what the conditions are going to be this early in the afternoon. Um, for Orlando, this time of the year, it should be pleasant, but there's going to be plenty of sun. So the team that can capitalize over this will be the winner. Orlando City is our favorite. Uh, after that, Orlando City is going to be heading out to Chicago the following Saturday. Um, this is something that we already knew about, these uh, first two games. But now we know what the rest of the season is going to bring. We're going to be at home against uh, Cincinnati. Uh, we're going to go away to LA Galaxy. Then, which by the way, this is the first time that we play any of the LA teams since 2019. So it shall be actually no online too since 2018, because in 2019 we played them at home. So since 2018, we have not been in LA. So we are heading over there now. Uh, then we are going to go to Portland, difficult place to play, very long trip for Orlando City. So it's going to be back to back. I'm wondering if the boys are just going to stay in the West Coast for these two games or they're going to be returning back to Orlando. That should uh, be answered once we get there. That will conclude the month of March. Uh, April has uh, five games uh, at home against LAFC, at home against Chicago. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're going to hit the road to go see Columbus. And then we're going to receive again Red Bulls. And at home, we are going to have uh, the new guys in town, um, Charlotte FC. Should be in, it's Saturday, 7.30. Should be interesting. I expect their fans to come down in big numbers. Uh, you will know what it felt like to have a team for the first time. And this is very, definitely a very short away game in MLS. Uh, by MLS standards, so short distance. So I expect to see a lot of people there for that game. Uh, and so this is April is a very, very friendly uh, schedule for Orlando City where they only see the road once. That will change soon. May, we'll see Orlando City on the road for three games. That is going to be against Montreal, heading up north, uh, Toronto. And these are basically... Uh, back to back, continuous weekends. Uh, and then you have, uh, for the first time in our history, going to Austin FC to their new stadium that was open last year. So, uh, this is gonna be an interesting one. I know a lot of fans for Orlando City are super excited about this one since um, this is uh, the first time that they get to experience the city of Austin, a city that has a lot to offer if you are uh, into. Uh, exploring the United States and seeing new cities and seeing new attractions. This is going to be the away game for everybody, I believe. Um, then after that, we're going to be receiving FC Dallas at home. Uh, interesting thing is we're going to be seeing a lot of Western teams this season, teams that we have not seen. Like I said, um, close in the month, we have not uh, faced Dallas in a few years. First time with Austin. So these Texan teams definitely are going to I uh, have a lot to say. Uh, Dallas, the last time we faced them uh, was in Dallas. Uh, this is um, Oscar Pareja's old team. And uh, it, was, it was a very uh, cagey 1-1 uh, result. And I expect 
nothing less but a war zone uh, at uh, Exploria on that Saturday. Um, then after that, we have Houston coming here. Uh, we have not seen Houston uh, since prior to the pandemic. Uh, they had a really bad season last year, so it'll be interesting to see what they have to offer us. And uh, June, uh, we are going to go to Cincinnati, and we are also going to uh, New England to face them at home. A uh, very difficult place to uh, to win, and Orlando City has a very poor record there. We'll see what happens. Then we return to July. July is going to be the spine of the schedule. It's basically what's going to determine the, how good or how bad uh, our season is going to be. Traditionally, this is the summer of sadness and pain, like a lot of fans have named it. And nonetheless, this is a, a month that's going to be it's going to see six games and against very difficult teams. We are going to be receiving um, this United on July 4th. Traditionally, we always lose the July 4th game for whatever reason. So hopefully this is the time to break with the tradition. Then following that, we are going to be uh, receiving us, uh, Atlanta United. And uh, then after that, we are going to go to Colorado. Uh, difficult place to play, Mile High Stadium. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, one of those, uh, probably one of the most difficult places to play in MLS based on the geographics of the stadium and the state. Then after that, we are going to, oh, I'm sorry. I said Atlanta United is Miami. My apologies. The, it's, so it's, we're going to go, that's a, don't, going to Miami. We're going to be receiving Miami, sorry. Uh, so that's going to be the first time that we see our in-state rivals. Definitely is going to be uh, the game to watch because uh, with the only four hours driving distance between the two cities, I expect to see a very large contingent of Miami fans. Um, last games that we have uh, faced them, they have been weekdays. So on a Saturday, uh, I expect people not to have the excuse to come up. Uh, so I apologize for that. So, yes, we're going to be going to Atlanta for the first time in the season. Uh, then after that, we are going to be receiving Philadelphia. That's another game that I expect to be very uh, difficult. Then after that, we are going to be going to the nation's capital to face D.C. And then in August, uh, hopefully we survive July. We have a healthy August because by this point, uh, who is going to make the playoffs is definitely going to be known. We're going to receive um, New England. We're going to go to Red Bulls. Uh, we are going to go for the first time in our history to Charlotte. Then we are going to be facing at home New York City for the first time in the season. Uh, the 2021 champions will see how that it's going to be a KG match, I think, uh, because Orlando, uh, I believe, has something to prove uh, that uh, to their expansion um, twins that, yes, you won the championship last year, but uh, what you got this year. So we'll see by then what's going to happen. And we're going to be receiving Seattle. Seattle's a team that Orlando City has never been able to defeat. Um, they're going to be having them at home. They're going to be coming across country. That has never stopped Seattle from uh, defeating Orlando City. So definitely on the lookout for that. Um, then we are going to have a away game at Miami. Um, again, another game that I expect to be a time bomb. Sunday, 8 o'clock at night, uh, for our distance between both cities. I expect a lot of Orlando City fans going down there. Um, Philadelphia, and we're going to be receiving Atlanta United at home, a game that I expect to be uh, 6 p.m. on a Wednesday. Oh, 6 p.m. on a Wednesday? Oof. Um, wish this game would have been on a weekend. I think um, it will be uh, a better turnout that, let's say, having – uh, Philadelphia or um, Toronto. Actually, you know, I would have I would have swapped Toronto and Atlanta in the schedule if that was me. I think um, unfortunately MLS tends to forget that if you want to foster rivalries, you have to make the games appetizing for the fans to travel. We are not in a small country; we are in a continental nation, and traveling is difficult. So there you have it. And uh, so yes, after that. We are going to have uh, Toronto at home, uh, New York City away in October. I'm glad that is actually in that spot. 
Uh, this is a very difficult to, place to play. We had some mixed results over the years there. Uh, and at that point, uh, hopefully we are not gonna be needing uh, desperately three points. So we'll see how it goes. And then we are going to be closing the season at home against Columbus Crew. So that's pretty much it uh, for the, uh, for the season, uh, schedule, uh, as of right now, um, the team is rumored that, uh, Joshi Mario Tun is planning a comeback to Orlando. Definitely Cruz Azul has, uh, released him. Uh, that's already out in the open. We don't know what's going to happen. So that's still out there. And last, uh, it appears reports from, uh, Uruguay are saying that, um, that uh, Facundo Torres may be a done deal by the end of this uh, week since Peñarol really wants to uh, close all deals before the end of the week as the team is going to go on a three-week recess uh, for the holidays and uh, summer. Uh, you got to remember that uh, they're on the Southern Hemisphere, so it's summertime down there uh, because the preseason basically will start after uh, – January 7th, that's when they're starting to gear up towards all the tournaments and all the things that they have planned for, for the team. So they obviously want to know who's going to be here, who's not, who do we have to uh, get to replace whatever player. So that is basically it. So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe. Again, I can be found as Florida underscore man76 on Twitter. And if uh, you speak Spanish, Piro Esquina is the podcast, the Spanish language podcast that I've been producing. Um, so there you go, my friends. Uh, hopefully uh, next year it's going to be a season to remember for good reasons. Thank you very much. And as always, vamos Orlando.